When you think of tropical North Queensland, what comes to mind? You've got the Great Barrier Reef, Daintree Rainforest, Pigeonbrook Island, isn't it spectacular? But actually, on the stretch of coast between Cairns and Townsville, there is a load more to explore, particularly if, like me, you're into your food. It's a brilliant place for a road trip and for an adventure. Hitting the road in this stunning part of Queensland, you could be forgiven for thinking that it's all about sugar cane and nothing much else. But actually, that couldn't be further from the truth. First stop for me is just outside Cardwell, about two hours' drive north of Townsville. This is Sea Farms, the largest producer of farmed prawns in Australia. If you've ever eaten Crystal Bay prawns, well, this is where they come from. Andrew, this is a beautiful part of the world, but the first thing you notice coming here is the scale. It's absolutely enormous. How much prawn do you got going on here? Yeah, we grow quite a few tonnes here every year, Ed. There's uh, 32 uh, hectares and 38 ponds on this site. Right, OK. And what sort of prawns are you doing? Uh, we do banana prawns and tiger prawns. This is obviously a famous area for growing prawns, but what is it about this region that makes it so good? We've got uh, tropical growing conditions, so the big thing is having that water temperature year-round, so we can actually grow the prawns quite well at a fast rate. Fantastic. Now, here in, the, in this pond, what do you got in this one? Uh, there's bit large banana prawns in here. They're coming to the end of their crop cycle, so they'll be harvested very soon. And what does the harvesting involve? Just draining the prawns out with the water. We capture them and we send them up to the processing plant up in Carble. Not a chance I could see some, is there? Yeah, I reckon we can, should be able to catch a few here. Catch them? Oh, I love fishing. If you ever go to do something and you can see how this is going to go wrong even before you start, it's a tiny little gangplank of a walkway. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> That's a pretty good cast for your first attempt, Ed. The question is, are there any prawns in there? Oh, oh yeah. One. Just look at the size of them. Amazing. This here is a banana prawn. That's right. Still very feisty. Um, how old would this prawn be? That prawn's about uh, 16 to 17 weeks old. Right, OK. From here it goes to processing? That's correct, yeah. Are you going to show me that? Yeah, we can head up to the processing plant now. When the prawns come in from the ponds, this is where the magic happens. Bit of a wash, bit of a sort. You know, the scale here is incredible. Every year, 1,800 tonnes of prawns go through this facility. And incredibly, in the lead up to Christmas, it's 25 tonnes each and every day. It's massive. But the thing that makes a Crystal Bay prawn so good to eat is the attention to detail. Do you know how they make sure that they're all the same size? Check this out, you won't believe it. It's hard to imagine, but each and every one of the millions of prawns that go through here every day are individually weighed. That way they can be sorted into their different size grades. So it goes along the belt, the number comes up, and it gets automatically selected to a different conveyor belt. And from here, it's off to the cooking room. <laughs> Look at that colour. I wish you could smell it. Out of the cooker, they've gone into an ice bath just to slow it down a little bit, and then they'll be ready to pack. But the reason they're so good, the reason they're the best prawns in Australia is just half an hour ago, they are in the ponds right outside the processing facility. That speed is where the quality comes from. The speaker speed in just a couple of days, they're going to be in your local Woolies. And that, I reckon, is absolutely incredible. But for now, can't wait to have a taste. When you're enjoying Crystal Bay prawns, remember to peel them head first, then you start from the back end of the prawn to get the best results. And I'll tell you what, this is a beautiful looking sweet prawn. Oh, how good is that? That flavour is incredible. However, I've got a bit of cooking to do, and for that I need the raw ones. We're going to make some simple prawn sausages and combine those with this lovely fragrant broth. The first thing you're going to need is 600 grams of your raw prawns and a mortar and pestle. The idea is you're going to pound it until it forms up a paste. To help get some grip, a little bit of salt helps. And for flavour, a couple of cloves of garlic. What you're looking for here is the texture. A few lumps, that's great, but it needs to be sticky. That way it'll hold together. At this point, we're going to season with a little bit of fish sauce. Then to enrich the mixture, you need a couple of egg yolks and a tablespoon of double cream. Stir that through. Oh, and a grind of white pepper. Then making the sausages is super easy. I'll show you. You're just using a little bit of cling film. Then you trim it off, fold it over, and it'll make roughly a log shape. You need to tie off one end to secure it. 
But then the other end, give it a bit of a twist. It doesn't need to get overly tight, just a little bit of pressure so it gets nice and round. Tie that one off again. And you know what? There's your sausage made. These are best if you let them sit for just about five or ten minutes. That way the flavour's really infused. You get a better result. Meanwhile, I'll show you how to make this broth. It's so simple. You need 500 mils of fish stock. I sometimes use chicken, but fish works better. With some diced up tomatoes, some basil leaves and some fennel seeds. Pop that over a heat and bring it up to a simmer. As soon as the tomatoes are softened, just mash it with the back of your spoon. That's looking good, smelling even better. At this point, we'll just set it aside. To cook the sausages, you just need a steamer. And once that's going, pop them in. They'll need about seven to eight minutes until they're just firm. It's easy to tell when these are done because the smell is absolutely fantastic. The last thing I'm going to need is a little bit of a salad to pop on top. It's kind of like a sambal. Ginger, chilli, coconut and dill. Mix that together. Strain the soup. Pop it into bowls. Couple of sausages. Bit of salad. And finish with fried shallots. There you have it. It's a fantastic little dish. Perfect for an entree for your next dinner party, you know? That lovely mix of Western and Asian flavours. Simple to cook and delicious to eat. Speaking of culture, it kind of surprised me, but around this part of North Queensland, there's a town called Ingham where there's a really strong Italian culture, and that's something I'm definitely interested in. So next off, I'm going to meet an old bloke called Luigi who grows some pretty incredible vegetables. Can't wait.